Today we're going to be taking care of my uh, 2012 Volkswagen GLI. Um, so this thing is a nice, lovely, retarded car and has decided that, well, it's having a multitude of issues. Um, so for one, it's misfiring on cylinder three. So I'm only on running on three holes right now. And the, uh, the major issue, I think, it's not necessarily what we're going to be taking care of today. I think it's something else. I think the wideband O2 sensor in the car is shot, and what's happening is it's running extremely rich. I've had issues with it for the last two, three weeks or so with the car running quite rich. Um, and it's just running out of, out of spec in terms of fuel error ratio. Just throw in a whole bunch of codes. First one that came up was for the uh, O2 sensor, which is P0130. Um, this has basic code for bank one, sensor one. In this case, it's a four banger, so it's only got one bank, so that's going to be my wide band. Um, and now what's coming up is I'm having really rough idle and really rough running up until about 25, 30,000 RPM, or 3,000 RPM. Um, so, I also threw another code, which was, uh, P303, I think, um, whichever the one is for misfire detected on cylinder three, full three. So, what we're doing today to take care of that is I've got from ECS tuning a, uh, new set of ignition coils and spark plugs. And we're going to go ahead and install them into this car right here. So we'll go ahead and do the uh, honorary, you know, YouTube-style unboxing where I grab the most obnoxiously large fucking blade that I have and cut a piece of tape that really could have been cut with my fingers. So yeah, there we fucking go. Look at that. Oh, following right into their steps. Oh, wonder what's in the box. Gee, I totally didn't fucking already tell you. Would you look at that? Oh, another box. Assuming those are, that sounds like the plugs. Yeah, these are the coils. So, once again, you gotta use that obnoxiously large fucking blade. Look at that. Is that satisfying or what, huh? Is that satisfying your needs to see shit cut apart? Is, is that cool? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. So we've got these uh, NKG um, plugs. I think they're, yeah, this is the correct one. So this is the factory uh, heat range and uh, basically they're direct replacement for the ones that are already in there. It's got all four of those. We've got this little baggy of shit. And uh, then in here, we've got some new uh, new coils. So we, we went with the uh, the red ones, which happen to be the only ones they have because uh, race car, right? Um, yeah. So like I said before, we're running on three three holes right now on this lovely two liter engine. Um, and I think the problem child is right down here. That's the. Uh, the wide band right there sticking out of the side of the turbo. This is the uh, CVFA engine, the California compliant bullshit one with the primary fucking gigantic cat coming right off the turbo because apparently it's better for the environment or some shit. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get these installed. So I'm just gonna go through once again, like what I think the issue is, because if any of you know more about this engine than I do, um, please let me know because from what I'm tracking on right now, what I think the issue is, is related to this O2 sensor. Now it could also be an issue related to, so originally I was running a muffler delete on this car. Um, so after the stock downpipe, there was nothing. The you know, stock cat back was completely disconnected and then it was just a straight pipe all the way out from the back of the downpipe. So what that can do is because these cars are apparently more smart than they really should be. It's going to confuse it, potentially.
especially that extra flow rate can cause issues with that O2 sensor properly reading, um, which can cause the car to run rich. So that's that was my theory number one. Um, actually, my, my dad came up with that theory, so I went ahead and I'm just eliminating variables at this time as much as it pained me to make this thing sound like a uh, normal grocery getter again and not be obnoxiously loud where everybody knows, you know, oh, look at this fucking kid, he's running around with a loud-ass car. But, um, yeah, it's quiet again. Hooked up the stock, stock cat back, and so I'm just eliminating variables at that point, so there's that. Then I know for a fact, number three, hole number three, spark plug is, uh, it's probably fouled up, just based on the fact that I have a consistent misfire. Um, I'm hoping that's the issue. If that issue doesn't get resolved by the replacement of basically the entire ignition system, I might cry a little bit to be honest because that means I'm having some more serious issues potentially with my intake valves. Um, don't really want to deal with that. So we're just going to go ahead and replace this with plugs and hopefully the issue kind of fixes itself and we'll see if hooking up the mufflers fixes it again. I kind of suspect, because I did run this car for nearly a year and a half with no mufflers on it, and I never had any issues with uh, the AFR. The only time I had issues with the AFR is when I actually swapped this downpipe for a catless downpipe and didn't also tune it along with it. Um, I just wanted to, you know, shoot flames, because why not? But. Um, it really did not like that, so I switched it back to the stock down pipe, and I'm just holding off on it, putting on the catless until I get this thing tuned. But, yeah, so I haven't had any issues with the AFRs before this as a result of my muffler delete. However, I did end up going off to college uh, again this year, and I left my car here, and my dad said he'll drive it every day and, you know, keep the battery charged and stuff like that has to be quiet because he doesn't like being obnoxious so it was then set back to the stock exhaust system for a while about four and a half five months um then i got back because of the whole uh, coronavirus thing and ripped the mufflers right back off of it and then these issues started persisting maybe three weeks after that so I don't know if that's the issue or it could, I, I have a slight inclination that it's just this O2 sensor being bad. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully this fixes the issue and if we still have problems with our fuel trim, we're just going to go ahead and replace that O2 sensor and if that doesn't fix it, I'm going to bring it to a shop because that's beyond my uh, retardation. Alrighty, so basic how to, we got to start by uh, removing the good old engine cover here. got to remove the uh, wires here for the uh, ignition coils. So. Alrighty, so first step is you just pull these out. And then you just got to start working these up and out. So you just kind of give them a good wiggle. Applying upward pressure. Since I'm replacing them, I'm not too worried about breaking them, but if you're not replacing them, be gentle. The ones in and around the PCB valve are kind of a pain in the ass. Just because. Yeah. Alrighty. There's more shit to work around, less areas to get your fingers in. Volkswagen does make a tool that kind of clips around here, and you can just pull them up like that. But I'm a peasant and can't afford that, so go ahead and just use our fingers like a fucking caveman. Alrighty. So there's our coils out. So as you can see, they're pretty uh pretty nasty. Um, so these were definitely in in for a change. Actually interesting seems like cylinder four. I'm actually not sure of the firing order on this. I believe it's one, two, three, four. But this one 
is not the one that's indicating a misfire, but it's it's definitely it's toasted. But if you look at three, it's not quite as bad. Let's look at two. Two's also not bad, and one's not bad. So that's that's interesting because the one that seems to be the worst is not the problem subject. Actually, it looks like looking at the hole, it almost looks like there's a bunch of shit down in there. Spark plugs are very easy. You just need a uh, 5.8 spark plug uh, socket. This has like a little rubber thing in there to grab the actual spark plug. This way you can pull it out and it will stay inside there. You need a 3 8 inch ratchet and then a gas extension. Hopefully these aren't rat fucked in here. Go ahead and move. spark plug it's definitely a little bit fouled there um, it seems like actually the crush washer on it there's a lot of oil in there it's never a good sign um, that could be potentially indication of a different issue um, that's that's I'm pretty sure cylinder four I'll have to do some research and double check real quick but I'm pretty sure that's cylinder four, and that's not the one that's been the issue. But you can definitely see, if you look at this uh, plug right here, we'll focus. That's seen better days. I mean, that's uh, definitely got some severe fouling on it. And uh, yeah, I'll have to look. If this is cylinder three, which doesn't make sense because it's the far one, cylinder three should be one of these then this would explain my issues. Um, but, I don't know, it looks like it's more, like this looks like oil down here, not gas. <laughs> Alrighty, so after doing a little bit of research, I found out that basically the Order is one, two, three, four. So this is actually the problem, problem child right here. But also when doing some research, I found out that this oil buildup and gump inside of this, um, it's not just oil buildup, there's also just some sludge in there. I think it's mostly, yeah, it's oil. Um, but basically what it is, and th this could actually make a lot of sense um, looking at this engine. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but there's some some oil buildup around the valve cover gasket here. So a leaking valve cover gasket can be caused by PCV valve going bad or just a bad faulty gasket. And that can cause oil buildup in here. And I did have a pretty bad oil leak a few weeks ago out of the drain plug. Actually, I should probably check and make sure. I'm still, still looking good on oil but the, if this PCV valve is going bad and we have excess pressure building up in the crankcase, that can also cause um, potentially oil to start to seep out of the 
drain plug. Now if that is the case, uh, um, that would mean replacement of this right here, the PCV valve, which is notorious for being pretty shitty on these engines. Um, it's one of the weak points of the engine itself. Um, could also be caused, you know, I have a vacuum line running off of my PCV uh, hose right here going to my boost gauge. Um, that could potentially be a source of the issue. I did have a lot of oil buildup in this line and I ended up replacing the line. Um, so, I mean, that, that could all be related. So, I'm not really sure. Um, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm really hoping that cylinder three has problems because the coil out of three really does not look like it's in that bad of shape. There's a little bit of oil on it. Um, and there's some oil buildup inside of the well here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sop up some of this oil and I honestly should have done that in hole number one before I remove the spark plug because now I run a risk because there's an opening straight to the cylinder and to the combustion chamber. I run the risk of contaminating it. Um, so honestly what I might do is put the new spark plug down in there and then kind of clean it up. Um, and yeah, so hopefully that will solve some of my issues. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these spark plugs removed. That one's also pretty fouled up. Um, kind of see, it's definitely been in a need for some replacement there. And you can see there's also a little bit of gunk build up around the outside of it, but I don't know if that just came from the inside of this or not. Actually, now that I think about it, before I continue, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the inside of these. That's good. You can also see that this once again fouled up. Okay. Time for hole number four. and we got our dielectric here that we're going to just smear on some of these uh, surfaces. Of course the uh, tear here thing didn't work. Classic. Alright, so now we're just going to smear some of this. of a turn with the wrench afterwards to crush the uh, crush washer. Alright, so that's at the end of hand tight. Well, 
that kind of sucks. This uh, beautiful Harbor Freight socket is uh, giving me some, some trouble here. It wants to pop out of the extension rather than let go of the spark plug. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get our new coils installed. Alrighty, now I just need to go ahead and reinstall our wiring harness. That should be it, and uh, hopefully that will solve our issue. All right, so overview of what we're looking at here. So all of the spark plugs that came out of my car are in fact fouled. So what that tells me is it has been running rich, which is better than lean, of course. I mean, these have all been running far too cold, which is why they're all fouled up like that. Um, almost makes me wonder if I should have gotten different spark plugs rather than the stock heat range ones. Maybe a heat range uh, colder. But at the end of the day, this is what I did. Um, they should run for a while. I mean, as far as I'm aware, looking at the service history of this car... I'm not the first owner, but one other guy has owned it beforehand, and he kept records of everything, and it doesn't look like... Spark plugs were changed, I believe, but it doesn't look like the coils have been changed, so... Especially looking at this, and I mean, there's there's some weird shit going on with this one, because, I mean, there's, there's some gump in there that really should not be in there. Um... And the discoloration of this tells me that there's definitely some sort of leak in there. And it's causing some issues here. So I'll probably let the uh, engine run for a little while. Um, maybe in a couple days or so I'm going to go ahead and pull cylinder number one's coil out again. And check to see if we're having the same issues. If, if that is the case and we do have a valve cover leak, I'm going to go ahead and have to have that fixed. Another thing I have to add to the list of shit I have to fix. Gotta love it. Alright, let's get this puppy started and uh, make sure she's running smoothly. That already sounds a lot better than it did before. She's running a lot smoother. A lot smoother. That's great. Alrighty, so just
just took the uh, GLI quick for a uh, nice little circuit around the block. Um, pushed her up to like full acceleration, shifting red line after I let it warm up for a little bit and did a few, few slow laps around. Just testing all the different kind of driving conditions. Everything, everything seems to be working fine. Um, so far, not having any issues with fuel trim. It feels like it's running perfectly. Um, so we're gonna see what happened. I mean, we've changed two variables so far. We've gotten new, new plugs, new ignition coils, and we put the muffler back on. So that's two things that have been scratched off the list of potentially causing the issues or not scratch off the list, but they could put, be potentially causing the issue. So definitely gonna have to keep an eye on it. Um, in like a couple days or so, I'm gonna pull um, ignition coil number one out again, double check, make sure that we're not having excess oil buildup on there. Um, it shouldn't be fouling all that quickly, but if it is, then I'm gonna go ahead and take it into the shop and get that fixed. But if the, uh, just cause, I mean, the valve cover is not necessarily difficult. PCV system, I don't really know. I mean, I'll have to do some research in it. If it's something I can do myself, then I'll do myself. But a lot of times for stuff like that, that's more of a crucial system, um, especially when it comes to something that I could easily fuck up and then, you know, it could be something that could end up blowing my engine. I like to bring it to the shop just because, you know, I'm slightly retarded and uh yeah so getting stuff like that done doesn't always work so definitely gonna have to figure out what's going on with it if the issue persists or not um for all i know it was ignition the entire time that could be part of the problem um of why it was running so rich and yeah i mean there, there's a lot of different factors that could go into it if you guys have any ideas about what's going on with that engine Please let me know. Um, again, it's it, it's an EA Triple Eight Gen Two, um, you know, standard Mark V, Mark VI GTI, Mark VI GLI engine. It's in the uh, um, Jetta Volksbergs as well, Tiguan stuff like that. It's it's a very common engine. So if you guys have any experience with it and know something that I'm saying that's wrong or something like that, please let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your day.